So let's say you have a car from the 80s, like my Toyota MR2 Mark 1. Wouldn't it be cool to install this dash in your car and then you can have a cool retro screen pop up for a few seconds when you start the car? Or maybe you're the lucky owner of this beast. Wouldn't it be awesome to install this dash and you can have this appear when you start up the car so that you can reassure yourself and your passengers of the pedigree of your vehicle. Or maybe you own this glorious piece of machinery. Wouldn't it be great to start your day with this message? Or maybe you're this guy. Well, then you can have this as your startup screen so that the theme of your vehicle continues in the interior as well. But having custom startup screens is like a tiny little drop in the ocean of things this dash can do. So we're going to stick with this guy because I kind of like Nagatoro too. And now we're going to design a completely custom driving screen for this guy just so that I can show you how much and how quickly you can customize this dash. To build completely custom screens, we have to download Dash Designs. This is a completely free software you can download directly from the AEM website. The first thing we're going to do is that we're going to open a setup. A setup is a list of pre-configured engine parameters, everything from coolant temperature, oil pressure, boost targets, air fuel ratios, you name it. It's all pre-configured for you, so you don't have to do anything. Of course, if you do want to configure everything from scratch, you can do that too. Now this dash is entirely CAN based. If you don't know what CAN or CAN bus is, you can look it up online. But for now, we're just going to remind ourselves that CAN or CAN bus enables dramatically reduced wiring and dramatically improved efficiency of communication between different devices and ECUs within a vehicle. Instead of having to run a wire from everything to everything, all the devices and the ECUs in a vehicle can now communicate with each other through a very minimal wiring harness. And because it's CAN based, it means that this dash works with a bunch of third party devices. On their website, AEM keeps a constantly expanding list of third party devices that this dash works with out of the box. As you can see, the list is extremely extensive. And if you're using something that's not on this list, chances are it's kind of weird or obscure. So it doesn't matter what you're using, Holly, Haltech, Megasquirt, it's all in here as you can see. And this dash is going to work with your setup even if you don't own any other AEM products. You're not being forced into the AEM network. Also, this thing connects to OBD2 uh, on most newer vehicles and can read data directly from their stock ECU as well. Now, when it comes to my setup, I'll choose AM Infinity because that's the ECU I'll be using in the future. And as you can see, we get a nice pre-configured, pre-designed setup that is very pretty, very easily readable, very usable. And now we're going to delete everything so that we can use the pre-configured parameters, but we're going to design the graphics from scratch. I'm first going to make a tachometer. And as you can see, I just choose the tachometer option and I place the tachometer anywhere I want on the screen. And then we can design everything about the tachometer, the shape, the size, whether you want it to be smooth or maybe straight or uh, the colors. You can even choose the font and size of the numbers, pretty much everything. You can play around until you get the design you want. It's, it's as simple and as intuitive as, I don't know, MS Paint. And because we have pre-configured everything, the only thing we have to choose is the correct input for the tachometer, which is obviously engine RPM in this case. And that's it, tachometer done. Took me like two minutes. Now let's try to make a needle gauge. I'm gonna select the needle option and I want it to be, let's say, an air-fuel ratio gauge. Again, we can edit everything about the needle, the color, the shape, the length. We can even change the needle sweep, whether we want it to be a 360 sweep or maybe 180 degrees or 90 or whatever. Pretty much everything is editable. And again, because we have pre-configured everything, the only thing we have to choose is the correct input and we have to define the value range. That is the richest and the leanest air fuel ratio we want to keep track of. The only other thing we have to do is to select the values that the needle position corresponds to. So my bottom position of the needle is the richest air fuel ratio and moving up from there is getting less and less rich. So I'll just use some simple fixed text to display the richest and the less rich needle positions. And that's it, AFR gauge done, or actually not yet, because I'm not really happy with the results. I don't like how my needle is just floating there randomly in this empty space. It's not really well defined and it isn't clearly separated from the tachometer. Well, to fix that, I'm just gonna use the background option in the needle settings and I can import pretty much any picture I want. And I'm gonna import this one that I made earlier. And as you can see now, the AFR gauge is beautifully defined and clearly separated from the tachometer. But now we have a new problem. As you can see, my AFR gauge background is obscuring a part of my tachometer. Well, we can easily fix that too because dash designs and AM dashes are depth aware. We're just gonna go over here and I'm gonna drag 
my tachometer down below so that I set it above the AFR gauge background and problem solved. Now let's say that I want a boost gauge, for example, and I'm going to make it a vertical bar. I'm just going to choose the correct option, set it wherever I want on the screen, and then I could edit everything. Overall size, width, height, number of segments, colors, you name it. Something else that I really like about Dash Designs is this little handy preview feature right here. You can preview how the gauge is going to look as the values change, so you can see whether you like it or not before you actually upload it into the dashboard. But on top of this, AM Dash Designs has a simulator window where you can simulate pretty much everything, not just changing values, but also warning messages, alarms, anything you pre-configure and design into your Dash can be previewed before you upload it into Dash and actually test it out while driving so you can spot any errors or anything else you might not like. This is a huge time saver and can really save you some hassle and unnecessary efforts of multiple re-uploads of designs into your dashboard. Now, continuing with our design theme, I'm going to import a static image of Nagatoro right here, right next to the boost bar, so that she can motivate our driver to keep pushing performance and stay focused. Obviously, I'm going to need a speedometer too, and you already know the drill. Just define the correct input and the value range, so your minimum and maximum speed, and then you can design pretty much everything else, the numbers, the sizes, the colors, you name it. The last thing I'll be doing is setting a little warning text bar right here in this little free space that I have left. Obviously, you can define the color, the type of the text, the size of the bar, everything. You can design it yourself. I'm just going to put a red simple text bar right here. But in addition to designing how the text bar looks, you can also edit the text of the messages itself. The warnings actually warn you of engine parameters that are too high or too low, but you can change the text to something, uh, let's say, a bit more relatable. Now, in addition to the warnings feature, we also have an alarms feature, and this one warns us when an engine parameter is really too high. So, for example, as you can see, when the coolant temperature is high, you get a warning, but when it gets really, really high, you're going to have an alarm screen pop up on your dashboard. Now, the alarm screen is designed as a last-ditch effort to really grab the attention of the driver and to get him or her to basically stop the vehicle and prevent further damage. Now, just like any of our other screens, the alarm screen is fully customizable. You can change the graphic, you can change the alarm message, you can change everything. And we're going to change everything so that it suits our design theme. And here we have our screen, and obviously it's completely ridiculous. The only point of this was to show you just how much and how quickly you can customize this thing. You have basically infinite customization possibilities, and because of that, you don't really have to make a troll screen like this. You can make whatever you want. It can be much more tasteful and much more usable. But even if you want to have a troll screen for laughs, you can, because this thing has multiple screens. So once you're done laughing at this, you can just push a button, and switch to a much, much nicer and much more usable screen. You can have the funny one for, I don't know, car shows, and you can have this one for racing, and you can have then another one for different values, and then you can have a completely different ones with a even more values, a even greater overview with numeric values. You can define whatever you want in any way you want with custom graphics, with different values, with different parameters, Basically, there's nothing this thing can't do. But there's far more to it than just graphics and where you put them or what color they are or whatever. This thing can do so much more. It has so much more functionality packed into it. And what I just showed you in the customization screen in Dash Designs is just the tip of the iceberg. It can do so much more. For example, it's, let's take our theme even further. If you get the AM 12 position trim pot, which is basically a knob you can place inside your car, which you can then connect your ECU and then you can configure it to, for example, have switchable maps on the fly. You can configure the trim pot so when you turn the trim pot, it changes between different maps. You, you change the boost target, you change the ignition timing, you change whatever. So, for example, one position is your low boost map and then the other position is a high boost map and then you can change this as you drive. Really nice, right? Well, you can make this thing, the CD7 dash, together with an ECU and the trim pod. You can make these things work together because they're all can and they understand each other. So you can set up the trim pod to change maps, but then you can set up this thing to correlate with that change so it changes screens. 
So for example, when you have a, when you're driving in your low boost map, you change it to your high boost map, and this thing automatically changes the screen, and you can design a totally different screen for your high boost map, maybe a more aggressive, maybe a red screen, maybe whatever. And then this thing also has an on change screen, something you can display briefly when you make the change. And keeping with our Nagatoro theme, we can have this displayed for a very short period of time when we change to our high boost map. I mean, how cool is that? But all of this so far, still, we're just at the tip of the iceberg. For example, if you get an AMCD7 dash like this one, which is GPS enabled, you can hook it up to a GPS module. The module is 30 bucks from AEM, and when you do that, this thing's gonna open up a whole new world of possibilities for you. The first thing it's gonna let you do is have a GPS-based speedometer. I myself am really looking forward to that. Currently, I have massive issues with my, with my speedo cable. It's always popping back out, no matter how I screw it down. After a couple of weeks, it comes back out. New speedo cables aren't available for my car, so I tried used ones, they're all the same. The speedo always comes out and I have to put it back in, and that's kinda annoying. With this, no more speedo cable, but even if my speedo cable was working properly, it's not gonna be compatible with the new transmission that I'll be using. And I'll also be using an aftermarket differential, and that's gonna require a different speedo gear and a different speedo cable, uh, and that stuff is kinda expensive, so this thing is actually gonna save me money. And on top of this, uh, a GPS-based speed is always gonna be more accurate than a cable-based speedo. On top of this, if you change your wheel and tire setup significantly, the cable-based speedo is gonna be even more inaccurate. This thing, always dead accurate. But GPS-based speedo, that's just the beginning. With the GPS module, you can actually map your track. For example, you go to your local track, if you have this, and the GPS module, you can map the track, and then you can have the track display on this thing as you drive around the track and it can even display your position on the track. It can record your lap times and it can even do predictive lap timing based on where you are currently on the track. So this is video game stuff we're talking about. And with a logging CD7- dash or a CD5- dash, you can log all of this and then when you get home, you can look at the logs and you can see what you did at which exact point in the track and how you can improve. I mean, this alone can be a complete game changer for any racing enthusiast. But still, still, we're just at the tip of the iceberg. You can add a vehicle dynamics module from AEM onto this thing and that's a three axis g-force monitoring thing that monitors your g-forces front to back left to right top to bottom and then this adds an, another sea of data onto the logs and then you can really see everything so this thing is designed to minimize your effort and absolutely maximize the data you're getting it 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 isn't cheap obviously but when you realize what's packed into it it, it's actually a bargain because it can change your game. When you realize what this thing can do, it's extremely competitively priced. And I know what some DIY enthusiasts are probably gonna say now. You know what, I can do the same thing with a tablet for, the pro for a fraction of the price. Uh, no, you can't. Let's, first of all, this thing is IP67 rated, which means it's open cockpit safe. You can put it basically anywhere and nothing's gonna happen to it. A tablet, you know what's gonna happen to that. Also, this thing is direct sunlight readable. No tablet is. It has an anti-glare coating, and right now you're probably seeing some glare on it, but you can still read all the numbers. Let me just show you how much light is being directed at it. These are studio fluorescent lights. And as you can see, they are extremely, extremely bright. There's three of them, and they're shooting light right at this thing and there's still no issues. I even tried directing direct sunlight on it through my window, that's never gonna happen in a cockpit. Still, as you can see, you can clearly read the numbers. Additional benefit is this isn't a touchscreen. You're gonna say, oh, that's bad. Actually, it's not. It has giant buttons which are designed so you can press them accurately and confidently with driving gloves. Trying to, you know, press little icons, scroll through them, on a on a tablet that's touchscreen when you're racing i think you're risking ending up you know in a wall 
Comparing this thing to a tablet is a joke. This is CAN based, which means it has a high speed, high accuracy, direct connection to everything in your car. Whereas a tablet receives data through a flimsy Bluetooth OBD2 adapter. There really is no comparison. Speaking of OBD2, because this thing is CAN based, you can hook it up to newer cars and it can read data directly from their ECU. And if you don't want to remove your stock dash from your brand new car and to hook this one up, AM lets you mount this thing into your car in a non-permanent way. They have a mount that you hook up to your windshield and you just stick this thing on that mount and they even give you an accessory that lets you get power and ground from the 12V lighter outlet in your center console so you can hook this up and get all the usability all the data over a track day weekend and then when you return to your daily drive or maybe you want to sell the car you can very easily remove this thing so as i said finding stuff that it can't do is very very hard you also might be thinking if it's can based what about my ancient analog signal from my 80s car for example, how can I display my fuel level on this thing because the signal coming from my fuel tank in my 80s Toyota MR2 is analog? Well, don't worry, AM has CAN modules like this one or this one and then you can hook up your analog signals into the CAN module and that converts the signal uh, for something that this can read. You just have to configure it and then you can display pretty much everything on this thing. It doesn't matter if it's CAN or analog. As I said, finding stuff this can't do, very, very hard. I could probably spend another hour or two listing the features because we're still at the tip of the iceberg. So I have to cut the video short, which brings us to the final and perhaps the most important reason of why I'm installing this into my car. My car is a Toyota MR2 Mark I. I'm currently collecting parts for a new high performance turbo build. And as you know, my car is heavily documented and I use it as an educational tool on my channel. And this thing is going to make everything, uh, the car and my videos and everything else, an even better educational tool. This is going to bring so much value to everything. It's incredible. It's going to bring value because it lets you log everything. It lets you choose what, when and how you log things. And then, you, then it lets you display and overlay that on video. This means that we can explore in a real life example on a real car how different parameters of an engine influence performance and how these different parameters correlate with each other. For example, we can switch ignition maps on the fly, which means we can log and see how different ignition timing affects performance and then we can display that on the video and show it. We can see how air fuel ratios affect performance, how uh, intake air temperature, for example, correlates with the chances for knock, how oil pressure influences oil temperature and vice versa and so on and so forth we can see how everything correlates with everything and display it in a visually nice and easily observable and understandable manner in a video as you can see i'm excited about this obviously this is just the first video uh, where i just introduced this thing and there's going to be more videos in the future how we install it how we configure it how we set it up and so on and so forth and then we're going to use it for all that sweet sweet education so yeah that's pretty much it for today's video uh, if you're interested in one of these things there's links down below uh it might seem expensive at first when you just look at the price but honestly it's it's more than justified if you have a build that's serious enough this thing can take it to to a whole nother level another three levels uh if you ask me so yeah again as always thanks a lot for watching and i'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the day for each